Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. So as promised, this is the showcase video for the 1954 Bowman set that I had completed a little while ago. It's been a little while now, but I wanted to make sure I got the video completed. Had a little time to sit down and uh, record this one for you. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the set as a whole. Maybe I can have a follow-up video on that if there's enough interest and if people want to do it. This is mostly a showcase. I'm going to go through the set. I have two cards that are graded that I've got over to the side. So when I get to the blank spot on the page here, I will pull out one of those cards. We'll include it as part of it. It is 224 cards for the main set. There are variations uh, of a variety of different types, mostly different stats and different pieces of information that are on the cards themselves. I've got pretty much a straightforward set of them. The other one that is a big one that I do want to add to my set at some point, but I do consider the set complete without it, is a second copy of the, night, of the number 66 card, which is the Ted Williams that was pulled from production early on, which is obviously one of the major variants of this set. Now quickly, the only other thing I'll say is that obviously this one is not everybody's favorite because of the kind of the simplicity of it following the 53 Bowman color, which is obviously a much more aesthetically pleasing set, but I always thought the little pastel uh, little box in the corner, I always thought was kind of a quaint uh, to go along with the facsimile autograph of the different players. So on the first page, you got Phil Rizzuto, you got Nelly Fox, you got a couple different other different players. Like I said, I'm not going to spend too much time on each page. I'll kind of flip through them here, and we'll zip through. So on this page, obviously, you can see you got Richie Ashburn, Carl Erskine, and a lot of the Yankees and the Dodgers were obviously a lot of the premium cards at that time. Like I said, we'll flip through a lot of these. Most of the set, a lot of it is beat up like this, but some of them are okay. It just depends. Uh, aesthetically, mostly this uh, was a set that I started working on years ago before I started worrying too much about standardizing the look of the set. Today, I would probably build it a little bit differently. Moving through here a little bit. Let's just keep going. And you can see this one here is probably one that would definitely be due for an upgrade. we got a Mini Minoso here. A couple, a couple of them. I've got a list of different ones that I'm probably going to upgrade over time. This would probably be one of them for sure just to get that a little bit more cleaned up. And this one here is off center, but to the point of almost being miscut. So probably I would at least look at that one as a possibility as well. But complete is complete for now. And here you go, this one's another one that has seen better days. You got the breakdown here and the tape holding it kind of together. So there we go. Okay, we're scrolling through. This one would probably be another one, just because of the cut. A lot of these I've had for a long time, so it kind of makes sense. This one's a fun page here. You got Ina Slaughter, you got Eddie Matthews, and you got uh, Pee Wee Reese to go along with it, Hoyt Wilhelm. So this is actually a pretty good page here. And these are the eight pocket pages, which makes these a lot easier. So here's the first uh, blank, as far as this is concerned. So this is the first number 66, and then this is card number 65, which you may know as this guy. I wanted to show this one first, but this is actually the first uh, Mantle card I ever had. Very much in the beat up category, uh, to the kind of destroyed category. I don't even think any of the third-party graders would take this one, authentic or not. But uh, I did replace it uh, and upgrade it with this one here, which is still a one, but obviously a lot cleaner. But technically, these are both poor if you really want to get down to it. Big difference uh, spectrum-wise between one and the other, right? So that's the first blank we've got here on this page. And then, like I said, the other 1966 would be Ted Williams in this place. There we go. Take a moment to make sure I show off the different ones here. We've got Larry Doby over there. Roy Campanella. And then here's your other blank right now, right beside Roy Campanella. So that should be card number, I believe, 89. And that is the Willie Mays. So that one I've got in uh, PSA 1.5. Had this card for a little bit, so that would go right there, right beside Roy Campanella. And then you got Robin Roberts. Here's another good candidate probably for upgrade as well. Something I'll get to later on. So this is a kind of a subsequent project after the fact. A few other really old beat up copies that I've had for a long time. Some of the more beat up ones are the ones that I've had probably the longest. So here's a Bob Feller. Not too bad. Gil Hodges on this page. Let's see, we got Billy Martin on this one here. Don Newcomb, just scanning through the cards as I go through them. Yogi Berra, early win, pretty good. You got Duke Snyder going here. Whitey Ford. 
Okay. We're on the home stretch now. Like I said, it's 224 cards for the whole. So actually it's a fairly small set. Not too surprising though, given that by that point, I think Bowman was starting to have budgetary problems. And in some cases they weren't able to get the facsimile signature, so they did go with the printed font. By the way, if you notice, here's a Jimmy Pierce. If you remember back to card number 66, I'll go back to it real quick here, just to kind of show it. Uh, here, let me go back. So you see Jimmy Pierce here? So that's Jimmy Pierce, and that is card number 66. So you can see there, 66. But you can see from what I just showed you a second ago, basically the identical card. That one is actually card number 210. So that's the whole situation with the Ted Williams taking up that spot. As soon as it got replaced, it basically got replaced with another version of nearly an identical card, but numbered differently. Let me adjust this a little bit here. Almost done. Right here at the tail end, Henry Thompson, Preacher Row. And then, last card. This one is actually one of the variants. So this is another card number 67. I can't remember which variation it is, but I did include that one since I had it. But that's the last regular full page up to card number 224. Now actually something I hadn't really looked at too closely. You can see this one here. It almost looks like it's completely painted over the way this uh, this picture looks. So Mimo Luna. Might want to look into that one a little bit more. It's kind of an interesting one. So if I do kind of revisit this, uh, maybe it'll be a situation where I'll go back and look at some of these cards and maybe I'll talk a little bit more about kind of the story behind some of them where applicable. But for the most part, I just wanted to make sure I got through the uh, the bulk of it and actually got a chance to show off the uh, completed collection itself. So there's our Willie Mays. There's our Mickey Mantle with our other Mickey Mantle. Kind of a unique combination. So it's been fun putting together this set. It took years. I started this one years ago. As you can see, a lot of the cards are really on the more beat-up persuasion. Just because, honestly, it was, it was meant to be very budget-friendly. This was a budget-friendly build of the 54 Bowman set. If I was going to do it today, I probably would be a lot pickier. With 224 cards, it's not so bad. It's right on the top end range of kind of um, the kind of sets that I would look at today. A couple of hundred cards is enough where there's plenty to chase. But at the same time, there's also a lot of common players that don't really excite me to chase. That's why I kind of gravitate now towards smaller checklists. The 53 Bowman color is kind of appealing to me because of that, being 160 cards. It makes it a little bit more straightforward. But once I had the mantle and the maze and a lot of the other big stars in it, it was just a matter of time that I just started chipping away at the, a lot of the singles over time. But anyway, so that's it uh, for the 54 Bowman Showcase. I just thought I would do this one since it had been a while since I did a showcase video. Hopefully down the road I'll get to do another one when I finish another vintage set. Uh, those are usually fun for me or when I work on one of my major projects. If you've got any comments or questions, feel free to throw them in the comments section. So this is more of a collector-centric video. I'll go back to doing a couple more of the talking head ones because usually that's uh, there's a little bit more mileage to cover and it's a little bit more spread open and broad in terms of topics. Otherwise, uh, like if you like the video, subscribe to the channel for more videos coming up and live streams on Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern time where we talk about basically whatever's going on, whatever the content gods provide. Anyway, that's it for me for now. Thanks very much. We'll catch you in the next one.